everybody. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and today I'm chatting with the cast of Freeform's The Bold Type. At the end of season three, we were left wondering what the future would be for the women's magazine Scarlet and how best friends Jane, Kat, and Sutton would balance the changes with their very complicated love lives. Here to chat about season four are our three best friends, Katie Stevens, Aisha D, and Megan Fahey. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing today? So great. Oh, so man. Good. <laughs> that good, huh? Yes, that good. I've been wearing a bra for How's two days else? straight. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you Check guys have been out. doing press for the show. I haven't been. <laughs> you haven't? Yeah, we switched we switch. places. Look I love that you guys have the luxury to sometimes not wear bras. I don't. I feel like I always have to wear one. That was a personal I don't know. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like you should just you live should your just life. Do, do you? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Um, see, this is why I love you guys. This is why I love the show because we can have these kind of fun, very female-driven conversations that I'm sure male viewers are just like, "Why are we talking about this?" I don't know. I feel like they're not mad that we're talking <laughs> about not wearing bras. Yeah, that could be the case. Uh, I'm excited for this show to come back. I'm a big fan. Um, but season four, I mean, that's a big deal for a show to like continue to grow and have this many seasons. Why do you think fans are so connected to it and keep coming back? I mean, I definitely think that one of the things that people are connected to is, I mean, our friendship, which I feel like is our friendship off screen, like it is on screen. Um, but I think just how we portray female friendships, it's not in the typical way that we've seen in a lot of television, which is tearing one another down, backstabbing. Um, it's just women advocating for one another and building each other up and inspiring one another. And that's been true to my female friendships, especially with these guys. So I think that that's something that is like at the heart of our show. It must make it fun to go to work every day too, that you actually get along like each other. Yeah. It's, it's so fun. <laughs> well, at least if it's not a good day, we can say, hey, today's not a great day for me. And we give each other the space to, ha to, to have those days, you know? And uh, picking up on the season, we have a lot of changes, which we're used to with the show. A lot of things are always shifting and changing. Scarlett looks like Jacqueline won't be there. I'd have to know for Jane, how is that going to impact her? Because that's her girl. She that is, is her girl. Pissed. <laughs> Jackie. She's sad. She's not taking it lying down. Um, she, uh, yeah, she like takes off her earrings. The girls have to hold her back. <laughs> um, no, but I think that, you know, Jacqueline is one of the reasons that Jane even came to Scarlet because she was a fan of hers um, and she's been such a, a mentor to Jane. So to not have that at the office every day is gonna be hard for Jane. So um, I think that the three girls are dealing with that change and trying to figure out like how do we Go fix on. this? How do we fix this? I think, um, I think all three of the girls are really impacted by this change at the magazine, you know, because in their own way, the girls have their own relationship with with, with Jaqueline. Um, and in the, actually in the first episode back, they get into some shenanigans. Um, to it's like not really legal. Fight. Yeah. Like take off all of my clothes. That's true. Thank God. We've all been waiting. I've been waiting for this to be written in. They did it for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful. She is the best mentor to these girls. Like, do you guys have anybody like that in your real lives? Just like you're somebody that you look up to who's really guided you through your careers like that? Because Jacqueline is like the best mentor for these women. Totally. I've, I've been so lucky. I've had so many women um, who are older than me and smarter than me who have been so kind to me as I started in my career. Um, and I, that's something that I am so grateful for. And we uh, continue to have that with Melora on the show. Like I mentioned yesterday somewhere else that we were. It's sort of life imitating art in so far as that she is she is um, a mentor to us in kind of a similar way that Jacqueline is. She just like has been around for so long and is so open and supportive and available to us. And I think that we're also really lucky that we got that in real life and we're also portraying it on the show. And the show I love so much because I've worked in uh, places like Scarlet, media companies where you have the digital and you have the print and all these things. And a lot of the changes happening in the real industry are happening on the show. So has it changed your perspective of the, of the industry at all or like what journalists have to deal with just playing these characters? Yeah, I mean, for me, playing a writer is, 
I mean, I I am I give all of the credit where credit is due in terms of people who are journalists because it is hard, especially in the climate where journalism is being constantly um, battled and. Uh, I, I just commend anybody who chooses that for a career, but especially now this whole shift that we're going through in the world of, of digital versus print and how digital is more so taking over. I think that it's it's crazy, and I've spoken to a lot of people that are in the industry just about how it's weird to think that we're not gonna have those physical magazines to really flip through anymore and that that's gonna be like a thing of the past. Um, so. Yeah, we definitely deal with that on the show, and I think that that's a crazy thing that's happening in the real world. I also think it's really interesting how um, magazines that are typically geared towards young women and millennials um, in recent years kind of took this tone of being kind of at the forefront of journalism and breaking stories that even huge publications that would usually cover the political stuff, like even they weren't doing it. Like Teen Vogue was doing it. Yeah, Teen Vogue came out the you gate know? with Elaine Wilteroth and just how yeah. impressive they were. And it was yeah. really inspiring. They also went through a similar kind of change uh, a few years ago. So I, I love that we get to tell that story. I think it's Absolutely. important. And let's talk about Kat because she ran for city council. She got robbed. She Guys. lost. She got robbed. She did though. get robbed. That was, I was like, very, I don't know what I wanted, but to I was To be mad. fair, though, like, to be fair, <laughs> what, I wanted. what is the timeline of the show? Because did she, like, launch a campaign, get on the ba ballot somehow, it's TV. and we almost don't ask win in, like, timelines. three weeks? <laughs> like, well, it's a city council. <laughs> I have questions. Somebody, um, <laughs> somebody once told me that in their brain, the timeline of our show is that like from the pilot to now has been like six months and I laughed in their face <laughs> because I was like, there's no way these people have been through what they've been through in six months. There's this no has way. been like Maybe. a year and a half. Let's like double that. <laughs> it's TV, we don't care. Uh, what was the question? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I was just more sharing my feelings that she got robbed and you know, how is that gonna kind of impact her going forward? Yeah, it did feel unfair for me because I I'm like a you know I root for her I want her to succeed but I think it's really important to see characters who are powerful and confident uh and see them fail upwards and uh use their failures as a kind of learning experience and you get to see her do that in season four really kind of like harness when she runs them. again yeah this time for president <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'd no, vote you're gonna, you're gonna get to see her like you know channel all of that energy into a, a different place. And actually, not the place you think <laughs> by the end of everything. That was, that's really good. That I was had, cryptic, and even I yeah. didn't understand it, to be completely honest. But that's why these conversations can be hard, like especially when you're a fan of the show, because you're like, I want to know, but I don't. What but can we say? They're like, let's talk about season four, and you can't say anything. anything. <laughs> so let's just talk about last season, kind of. And with Sutton, she was on a... A journey of self-discovery and figuring out where her passion really lied. And I think she found out that design was not maybe her thing. Um, so do we see her pushing forward in her career now, maybe moving out of that assistant role or taking on more responsibilities at Scarlet? Yeah, totally. I think she's fully recommitted to styling. Um, that's really her passion. And I think it was really cool that we showed her kind of exploring um, what she did last season and sort of being like, I thought I wanted to do this, but I changed my mind. I think that's a really great story to be told. Um, but we definitely see her recommitting and, and I think that that's gonna pay off for her in a way that it feels really pleasing because it's taken her so long to get there. Really, it's only been what, six months? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three Listen. Weeks. six whole months. <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> And on that topic, the fashion in the show continues to just elevate and be so fun. How much have your character's fashion inspired each of you individually, like to take more risks or to pull back or anything? I actually love that on the show, uh, I feel like all three of our characters at least have started taking more and more risks. And sometimes they pay off and they're great, and sometimes they look trash. But that's life, isn't it? Like sometimes you put something together and you look in the mirror and you're like, this is cute. And then you <laughs> walk out and a few hours later, you're like, oh, no. I tried <laughs> Shouldn't it. have done it. Yeah, I found that the being a part of the show and it being so fashion forward and fashion driven that I'm more so learning how to dress myself. I dressed myself today. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I definitely think like I, I am excited to always work with 
the costumers and and they're always really receptive to things that we want to do and things that we want to try with our characters and so this season for Jane I kind of wanted her to get out of dressing really kind of like prissy and preppy and I wanted her to kind of have this like androgynous feminine kind of style so we played around with that I asked them for a um you know those plastic visors yeah. <laughs> I was like can I wear a pink plastic visor please <laughs> And they didn't. And they did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it made me so happy. Was it bedazzled or anything? Did it have your name on it? No, it was like that and a pineapple shirt and like some pink pants. And I've never been so happy on set. It really wasn't for anyone else. <laughs> How much Very do the writers take you guys into consideration? Like your personalities, who you are? Do they try? So much. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's also like your first question. What do you think people respond to the most? And I. I think that it's the authenticity of the way that we speak to each other. Um, we try to speak to each other like people actually do, and the writers are so great. They give us so much room to kind of put their their words into our own words, you know? Whatever feels natural is always kind of um, a go, yeah. which and I think is us, really fun. And they let us ad-lib a lot, so yeah, like... We make up a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> They're, like, in the trailer, I think they played the part where you're standing next to your clothing rack. And I was like, I really like your rack. And I just, like, said that in one take, just, like, because I oh, like yeah, Megan's yeah, yeah. rack. And they kept it in. Yeah. Do you guys crack each other up? Like, who breaks the most? She, I break the most, I would say. I don't know, because <laughs> Aisha's pretty bad. <laughs> like, no, Aisha okay. will Aisha's, fully ruin a take yeah. because she's like, I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, Aisha's pretty bad, but Megan's always the one who's instigating it. Like, Megan is yeah. always the one doing some funny stuff, and then she looks at us and she goes, what? No, she doesn't I'm just it. acting, guys. She's a better actor than both of us, and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> She's funny. She's and I just sit there, one. and I'm the one who's like, we need to be professional. <laughs> That's not true. You're so much fun, usually. <laughs> You really are. I love it so much. <laughs> Let's talk about the love lives, girls, because these all three characters have very kind of complicated things going on. They're very career driven and passionate about their jobs, which I really do love. But the personal lives are also important. So let's let's talk about Sutton first. Her man might not be on this coast in season four. How is that going to challenge their relationship? Well, what I can say is that we get engaged. Wait, what? You can say that? Yeah, I can say that. Oh Isn't that God. crazy? They put it in a trailer, y'all. I miss it. Yes, anyway. I was shocked. You were shocked? <laughs> I was like, we're telling them this now? Yeah. They, anyway. for the entire season, all of the social media people were like, we can't show her with the ring on. Chaos. Any pictures they posted we took. photo one time and I was wearing it and they were like, take it down, take it down. <laughs> and then I was like, <laughs> and then they then spoiled they it in the gave trailer. It away. <laughs> Literally the first trailer to come out. But you like don't know if she says yes. We're like, wait, hold on. And we don't, don't know who she's engaged yes. to. <laughs> yeah, it might be me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know if she said yes. That's the... So she says yes. Cut! And, um... I mean, how do you say no to the Sam Page? Because it's real. I'm kidding. <laughs> do we think she's ready for all that? Uh, I think so. I mean, Sutton and Richard have been a couple for so long, and they've been through so much, and then they finally just were like, we're going to be together, we don't care, we want to be happy. Um, and so to see them kind of move forward... With that is, I think, really exciting. And I think it'll be really cool to see them, like, try to navigate him being far away while they're planning a wedding and, and all of that stuff. So it's fun. It's been cool to watch her journey, too, with kind of embracing her vulnerability and learning to kind of open up to him and trust. I mean, it feels like you root for them because you feel like it's healthy and that they're, like, both working yeah, toward totally. the same thing, yeah. you know? It's yeah. great. All right, so Ryan, Mr. Pinstripes, uh, mm -mm, stepped out mm -mm. of line last season. Mm -hmm. He kissed somebody else. Mm -hmm. She had some issues. Mm -hmm. How do we move forward? Um, <laughs> I I really love that we didn't tell the, the typical cheating story of somebody cheating and then you're done with them and mm -hmm. that's it. Because I don't think that that's true to what happens in real life. I think that it's a much more complicated situation. Um, and I think a lot of people choose to stay. And I think... Um, society kind of puts this pressure on people to like be more empowered than that for some reason. Um, and I think that ever, it's it's whatever your preference, preference is, whatever your decision is, that's right for you. Yeah. And so Jane did what she felt was right for her. And so now we're gonna see her kind of 
now that she made that decision, how do we move forward? How do you regain trust with somebody again? Um, how do you move past it without thinking about it? And so those are things that we're going to see her kind of deal with. Yeah, that's the only thing that got me. Because when it first happened, I was like, okay, he told right away. It was a kiss. It yeah, was everybody's like, like that drop that people. person like a hat. Like, you know, like I'm getting all these people on Twitter like being like... a hat? That's... I've uh, never heard that You've before. never? Somebody do heard that like to me. sack of potatoes. Or I've never heard that. You've never hats said? Hats drop quite slowly, depending yeah, they on like the hat. Flow. Drop, drop him. Drop that Drop like him a like hat. a weight. Um, no, but, but I Drop think him like a piece of paper <laughs> on a windy day. <laughs> no, but so many people were like so vocal about, <laughs> you know, you need to leave him. And I'm just like... First of all, you would never you would never put that on somebody in real life, you know, and um, especially when you love someone and you guys are so great together. Yeah, I think he told her right away. He yeah. came home. I he think that I, I think that I think that the most important story that we're trying to tell and that we are trying to tell in season four is that people make mistakes and um, I think especially in a culture that we're living in, which is this cancel culture of whenever people make a mistake, they're immediately canceled. I think that this is more of a story of h how, do we, how do we give people permission to course correct yeah. and to make amends and to gain some sort of forgiveness. Yeah, have a conversation, have yeah. a dialogue. I'm, I'm totally I with you I think it's so that. important to allow someone the space to change and be better, I, I do. I think that the cancel culture is actually quite dangerous yeah. um, in a lot of ways. So yeah, I think we're all kind of coming around to that. And yeah, like, okay, it's came in real hot. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got Kat Nadina, who, fan favorite. We're getting married, too. <laughs> Just kidding. I wish. <laughs> no. Self at the end of last season. Yeah. But we know Adina is going to be working at Scarlet. So can you tease us just sort of that dynamic and maybe some of the obstacles they're gonna have. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see them in the workplace together. Um, I love the fact that we get to see Nicole, who plays Adina in that particular set, because it was a place where we didn't really get to spend much time. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a new, different dynamic for them, kind of coming into something that feels like a clean slate a little bit. Uh, and we're gonna see them try to kind of forge a bit of a friendship, you know? And and as it is, like, dating and existing after your first heartbreak is, is it feels like, you know, before and after Christ, you know? You're like, wait, everything's different now because now I know what it feels like to have my heart broken. And I think that just um, that knowledge is gonna help Kat to kind of grow up and maybe meet Adina where she's been this whole time. <laughs> really sweet. I love all of these relationships, but as you guys mentioned off the top, I think it's the love between the three friends. Um, do you think that they are each other's soulmates, like in that Sex in the City way where it's like, we're going to have these relationships, but it always kind of comes back to these three? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely soulmates. Yeah. Yeah. Do they do brunch? Either? Like, what is... Oh, my yeah. God. Been We've been asking, asking for, brunch. for brunch for... I want brunch. Years. Well, you're not getting it. Why? Actually, that's not necessarily true. We still have six episodes left to shoot. Yeah. So maybe there will be brunch. We want a brunch episode. <laughs> I'm like, the they have us the drinking mimosa. all the time in places where we probably shouldn't be drinking. <laughs> Why not just, like, give us mimosas at brunch? Yes. Or I would also like to request a hat. <laughs> for brunch, I want a brunch hat. <laughs> we go to the Kentucky Derby, and we have brunch before. Okay. Those hats are really heavy, those Kentucky Derby hats. They fall really fast, they like will. sack, of, fall like sack of potatoes. Drop him like a Kentucky Derby <laughs> hat. You just yes. got to be specific. I think that's where that came from. I think exactly. that's where that came from. <laughs> Speaking of mimosas, I just want to mention Rosé really quick. <laughs> Ice and my Rosé. You had a new yes, album drop. EP out. Y you guys, give it up for this. Uh, the album is so good. It's so good. I live in that pocket, that kind of soul. Like, I, like, yeah. put it on on Sunday, and I was just, like, cleaning my apartment and just really feeling myself. So congrats on that. How, what is that? What was that process like for you? Um, I was just kind of, like, reading the news and on Twitter a lot, and I was like, wow, <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> uh, and the only thing that was making me feel better was the music I was listening to, and so I just decided to stop being so shy about my own music and just put it out there because yeah. life is short, and why not? And I love Rosé, so. Don't we all? 
Yeah, they say to write what you know, right? And I know about rosé and fraught relationships and, you know, love free that. love, baby. And that just brings me to the fan favorite question, which is like musical episode. I know you guys get asked Where all the time. It? There are some but themes But is there any movement happening. towards that? Um, no. Li- <laughs> I'm, I'm that person no brunch, that... No brunch, no music. Yeah, I'm, I'm that person who's enlisting our uh, bold type fans to just like go off on the social meds. Okay. Um, cause I think that, uh, we can make something happen. <laughs> okay. So you guys heard it and we need petitions. Yeah. We need hashtags. You know, like hashtag bold type musical. A proper, so really creative hashtag. So there to be hashtag. psychedelics involved. Thank you so much. <laughs> I want there to be psychedelics involved in the episode. Oh, I just came up with an idea. I can write it. Well, I Let's thought talk. that, well, Asia had it. a really no, good uh, idea that we okay. go on psychedelics and that's why we're hallucinating this musical happening in the office. Uh-huh. This was like season one and no one's listened to me. So I don't think they think it's a very good idea. I think they've seen it go wrong with other shows. No, you know? it's not going to not go wrong. That's not the point. It's absolutely going to go very wrong. Yeah, but we um, want to do but it have anyway. We seen the, have we it's seen the, the Grey's Anatomy musical? We could do it. <laughs> That's what I meant Emmy. by going wrong. And let me just say it, this. I'm a Grey's Anatomy stan. I've been watching that show yes. for like 20 years. The episode was a little left. I still enjoyed it. But, but that's, I think that's what, what my, about. my idea was to take all of the songs that they <laughs> did on Grey's Anatomy and redo them on our version yes. of it. And I think that we would be recognized I, by the Academy. I would, I would like if to, we made this choice. Like the Oscars would be like, you know what? I would I like we're going to make an exception. Show, but. I would Fuck like it. to shoddy doing the really dramatic rendition of uh, Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol. <laughs> That's that whole, it was always yeah. Snow Patrol or like the fray on Grey's yeah, Anatomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd I'm have to bring up some oldies. on the fray. Okay. How to save Do them. all the throwbacks. We got it. Yeah. I'm just saying, any idea that conjures this much conversation has to be a good idea. So fans, get on it. We need a social media campaign. You've got your mission. That's what you're going to do in 2020. Yes. In the meantime, let's go to Twitter. We have some questions. Edward is a man wants to know what is it like to work with Raven Simone? She's a dream. She's so wonderful. She's iconic. Really professional and smart and kind. Like always thinking about the other actor in the scene and like, do you need anything? Like, what's up? And just very like communicative and just a true joy to have had on the set. We really loved her. Yeah. She's so badass. I've loved watching her like being an EP and just growing up in the industry yeah. and being so dynamic is really cool. She's yeah. amazing. I love it. She's a great person. Who's got our first one? Right here. Hello. Hi, guys. Look at those purple pants. Thank you. They're velvet, too. Ooh. Yeah, those are I'm cool. very excited for tonight. Just <laughs> putting that out there. Same. Um, I wanted to ask, what was your favorite part of your character when you first started? And if it's changed, what's your favorite part now? That's such a fun I question. love that. Um, I would say that I like I liked Jane's neurotic nature <laughs> of uh, when we started in the pilot and how um, she was so persistent and determined to be a writer and be a good writer and to, you know, kind of gain the approval of Jacqueline. And that kind of coincides with what I like about her now, which is that she's not seeking that approval and that she's confident in her ability and in who she is. Um and I think that we're going to just see that kind of carry her through season four. And uh, there's exciting things coming up for her. Um, I think the thing that I really loved about Kat was the fact that she always seemed to walk into the most scary situations with so much openness and like bravery that I personally don't have. And uh, I think it was really um, <coughs> important and powerful to see a coming out story that just felt like that's it, and I'm out, and we here we go, like, everything's great, because uh, often you see a lot of angst, and kind of, um, it's it's a lot darker, usually, so I loved seeing the lightness of that, and the fact that her friends supported her through it, um, and I think now I, uh, I love the fact that we've gotten to see her um, go through some, some, some valleys, as well as some peaks, I love getting to see Kat be vulnerable. I think I loved at the beginning that Sutton never took the easy way out of anything. And now I love that she's like a kind of a freak. Like there's all these like little sort of hints, you know, when Jane's watching porn for the first time and she's like, it takes a while to find the right clip. Like 
you know, that little, like, little things like that that they've sprinkled in, I'm like, oh, I love this. Yeah. This is my favorite thing about this character now. So I, I'm excited that we finally get to see Sutton and Richard kind of getting a little down and dirty. <laughs> Because I always thought it was so weird that she's, like, the sexual freak of the three of us, and she's the only one we haven't seen have sex. That's true. And then we saw them in a shower last season, you know, so progress. Not that we're objectifying anyone, but we, we're kind of objectifying. <laughs> it's part of the show. Who's next? Hi. Uh, Hi. Huge fan on the show from the beginning. I'm so excited for tonight. Thank you. Um, talking about musicals and stuff, the music on this show is amazing. Your music so supervisor, good, right? Rob Lowry, is like Rob Lowry is amazing. Incredible. We're so um, lucky. And I know, Aisha, you, I think during season one, you like shared a playlist of like your emotions for like Kat and Adina. So I was wondering for this season, were there any songs that you listened to that kind of helped tell your story or any songs that you would advise us to listen to to kind of connect with your character? Ooh. Um, I listen to too much music because I don't have much of a social life. <laughs> um, Muna's new album is a great album and to me really kind of, uh, it, it was really descriptive, especially the last song uh, in kind of describing, I think each of the girls' journeys. I don't want to speak for, for you guys, but I, I, I feel I would like agree. this. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. Um, I also have been listening to Leon's record and I'm obsessed with it. And um, I think that uh, the Jane storyline, I would listen to Hope is a Heartache. Completely unrelated. I love the new Harry Styles album, but it has nothing to do with Sutton. It does. It's angsty. It's Isn't light. It? Like our show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, and also Haley. Oh, yeah. I'm a big Paramore fan, and Haley Williams is. Yes! I've been waiting for her to do a solo album for so long, and she just released a single yesterday. I thought it was going to be a perfume. We were in the car, so glad and I was not. like, I think she's going to release a single, and Megan was like, no, it's going to be a perfume. Because I, I know didn't want to be disappointed. I was like, it can't. I want, that's I literally want much nothing me. more for Megan than to become best friends with Haley. I you was, saw her in Nashville, okay, and I so cried. I live in Nashville, and I was at one of my favorite cafes, and she was sitting at the bar of the cafe in front of me, and I like just I hate being this person, but I discreetly took a photo. I was like, take a Megan. photo, and Katie was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And, I was and like, so do I, just, it. I just took a photo. It was like the back of her, but Megan, it was the back of her. You couldn't even see her face, and Megan texted me, and she goes, I'm weeping. <laughs> You're stalkers. I love so, it. So, Haley, I stalked you for my best friend, but uh, please love me. That's what friends are for. I think that's another social media campaign that we can just launch today, mm -hmm. you know, and just What's see what happens. Hashtag? Well, like, I feel like What's I put in a lot of work to this, so I'd like to be friends with you, too. Haley for the bold type? Haley. Yes. Nice. How about we Haley hashtag for Haley for the bold for Haley for Megan. Maybe we should just get it a little more specific. Yeah. No? No. I don't know things okay. about <laughs> tweets. <laughs> So hashtag Haley for the bold type, and we'll see what happens. And we have another one right here. Hello. Hi. 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 So my question is, what is one thing that you've learned from your character that you've taken into your own life? Hmm. I, go ahead. I'm I still think thinking. For, for uh, Sutton, I've learned persistence. Um, you know, if, if there's something that you really are passionate about, it sounds cheesy, but like truly don't give up. Just keep, you know, because you will succeed if you put that much energy into anything and you really want it that much. Um, and I think that that's something beautiful that Sutton has kind of taught me. And I'd say for Jane, um, I think when we saw her in the beginning of the show, she was kind of afraid to lean into her vulnerability. And um, I think that through the course of the show, and we'll see her continue on this journey, that it's okay to lean into your vulnerability. It's okay not to be okay. And you learn things from that and you can come up from that. And I think that there's something really powerful about saying and leaning on people that you need to say, I need you or I'm not okay right now and allowing those people to be there for you. Uh, I, I think just what I was saying earlier about how brave Kat is, I'd love to be that brave. You're so brave. You just put out music. You just put out music. That was You're very my hero. Scary. I literally like posted it to Instagram, deleted Instagram, <laughs> texted Megan. I just deleted Instagram. <laughs> it was very scary. But you did it. I yes, which did. makes you brave. Now it makes hell. me want to go and write songs. <laughs> Do it. Do it. People listen to your songs. We love your voice. Thanks, guys. Yeah. 
Thank you it's so much. It's just one big much. therapy session really now. Is. I love it. I Thank like you, love. The, I like the Thank energy. You. Uh, because your characters are so inspiring, and I think any woman who's like coming of age, it's like learning to embrace your vulnerability or to take risks, risks or follow a passion. Like those are things you have to be reminded of because they're the hardest things to do. I think yeah. season four premieres tonight on Yes, Freeform. and make sure that you live tweet with us because we're going to be doing that later. Yes. yes, live tweet, guys. I love the show so much. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Thank Please you. come back and talk about next season. You guys know where to check it out on Freeform tonight. Put your hands together for Megan, Katie and Aisha.